So from the last video you guys seen, some things have changed. And this thing's part of the way put back together. Before we go ahead and get this video started, also I want to go over something real quick because I know I've had a lot of questions about it and um, it's time I tell you guys what my plan is for the National Farm Machinery Show. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about when I'm going, when my brother's going, when Ross is going, when my dad's going, all of us. So me and Ross are going to be there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We're gonna be there Thursday, we're gonna go that way Thursday morning, come back on Saturday night. Augie will be there with my dad on Thursday and Friday, I do believe. They'll get out, they'll go up, they'll go down whenever they get out of school, or whenever Augie gets out of school, so it'll be um, a little bit before he gets down there and it'll probably be at night, we'll go to the tractor pulls that night and then, so yeah, also I wanna thank Agrigold for setting us up for that. They are going to be down there with us and uh, we're working on something right now with a company about where we're gonna sit at, me and a couple of other people that are going, smaller YouTubers are going. We're gonna try to figure out somewhere where we can all sit on one day so then we can see you guys because I know that a lot of my subscribers as well as a lot of other people's subscribers wanna see us so it'll be rather interesting to do and it'll be something fun to do. So, um, I've got this thing put a little bit the rest of the way back together. I ended up getting my parts here. This one was cracked right in there. You really can't see it. It's just like a barely a hairline crack. Um, it's, it had been leaking on me for like two years. So I finally went ahead and replaced it. Um, that one was a pain to get in there where everything is right there. So we got it in, me and Ross got this put in here today. Uh, there's a valve right here that was busted. We got it put together. Uh, and that had to take, we had to take all this off, this off, this off. All this stuff basically had to come off. So we got it all put back, to, or I got it all put back together. It's all put together as far as that goes. Um, and then I've also got this little sensor here that goes on the top of the tank I gotta put it in I'll probably have to do that tomorrow because I'm getting ready to leave but I gotta put that tank I gotta put that in uh, I gotta put this panel back on plug in your wires all that stuff so and then we got the planner the planner is another story so on the planner here they are having to replace, so there's a bar, a bar that goes from here to here. All of them have to be replaced just on that one side. This side is fine. They all, they all have to be replaced on this side, this one, like this one right here. And then this uh, airbag bracket also has to be replaced. Not sure if you can see that or not, but it wiggles around a lot. Another thing that we want to do is um, we want to put more fertilizer on here so we've already got these two fertilizer tanks here i think they're two two 750 gallon tanks there's two of them here in the middle yes that is a lot of weight to have on this planter so and then what me and dad were or what dad was thinking of doing is putting a 150 gallon tank on each wing you see a lot of people do that they put a 150 gallon tank on there for one that adds more weight that adds more stability for it and you can go longer so with these two tanks that we got on here now we can cover just about 20 acres short of what what you'd need to empty out these tanks so with your starter uh we didn't run a starter last year because we kind of wanted to see what the difference was and run it not running it we didn't run it on any of our acres last year uh as far as i know it turned out fine but we still we ended up having to put nitrogen on so it's kind of a toss up in the air. We're gonna do it again next year, but that's the plan as far as that goes. Uh, I think they also, this is the guys in the shops product projects here. 
I've been doing everything else, but they've got to replace these or they got to do something in there um, with these. Yeah, you get the idea. There's all kinds of other stuff that has to go on here. Uh, these blades are starting to get wore out pretty bad, so we got to put new blades on basically all the way across. Some of them are bent also from turning with it in the ground. Some of these will get a little bit of a bend in them. So we got some of them to replace them. Uh, and then, yeah, so this is an exact emerge corn planter. If you guys didn't know, we do have an exact emerge corn planter for some of my new people out there. I've gained a lot of people since last time that I've said anything about this thing. But yeah, we pull it with a 9420R. Um, wouldn't have it any other way because when you're pulling 24 rows across the field at 10 mile an hour, you are pulling a lot of weight behind you. So we, it takes every last bit of this tractor to pull this thing for us. Um, for the longest time, I was like, well, why would you need this? And I was actually talking to dad last night. And I was like, dad, did you ever think that you'd need, whenever you was running before with the CCS seed delivery stuff, did you ever think that you'd need a bigger tractor? And he goes, no, I never thought I did, why? I was like, well, do you think you do now? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> so sometimes we do think that we need, we need a bigger, um, we need a bigger tractor in front of it. But these units are a lot to process. They are a lot of moving parts, a lot more moving parts than what's in um, our other planters and what's been in our other planters. The thing about these is they have two electronic motors in here. I'll go to the other side here and I'll pull one off and show you basically what they are. So this is the unit pulled off. This is the unit on, okay? So here is one electric motor and there's another electric motor back there that runs this guy, which is your brushes that your seat, basically this carries your brushes down or this carries your seed. It goes around and spins and carries your seed down into the bottom into the furrow and let and lets it fall in and if you can see up in there the brushes kind of, or the brushes go all the way around and back down to the bottom um yeah this is a high speed planter you can plant up to 10 mile an hour we have planted up to 10 mile an hour before we have even planted up past 10 mile an hour we've planted up to 12 mile an hour with it as far as i know that's as fast as dad's had it but um Dad can do this a lot better than me. I am not that good at putting these units back in. I know what I'm doing, but it's very hard. Um, along with having this planter, you run into a lot of other issues that you never used to run into, or that we never used to run into. Um, as far as like basically having mud in places that you never thought you'd have to worry about having mud at, in these tubes you get mud in them very easily or not in these tubes in these brushes and then you got to take it all apart and pull the brush out and then pull it all apart on the end of the field so there we go sorry i had to put the camera down for a minute to figure it out <laughs> hi guys ross what did you buy a new pickup today maybe are you gonna show them yeah let's go let's go kiddos so Ross, what do we got here? Uh, 2006 GMC Sierra 2500 HD Duramax. Duramax. It's a Duramax. So are you happy with it? Yes. Or? I'm happy. Hmm. I like it. How many miles we got on it? 125 419. 125 419. So is that good or bad? Good. Very good. Low miles for the Sierra truck. Yeah, it is. That's very low mileage. That's actually lower than mileage than mine, and mine's a 15. I got 100 and I just crossed 180,000 the other day on mine. Very clean truck, too. That doesn't help you drive everywhere. It doesn't help. I work for a farm. Yeah, that's true. I'm afraid to bring this truck up here. <laughs> with, it being a di with it being a nice truck. And being a diesel. And being a diesel. Kind of scares me just a wee bit. Huh. Well, this truck is also an LBZ. It's an LBZ, yeah. yeah, yeah I think LBZ. that's what it is. I think an 06 is LBZ, yeah. but it's got the LBZ motor yeah, in it. You can either have the LLY or the LBZ, and this has the LBZ. Yeah, this one's the LBZ, 
It's got an EGR on it, I think. Yeah, it does have an EGR on it. Sadly. It's got an EGR on it and stuff like that, but according to state laws, you can remove that now. That'll be... Are you going to do that in the future? Later, yeah. Next six years, maybe. Next six years, maybe, once you get done paying on it? Mm-hmm. Oh, Ross, what'd you get yourself tied up into? Hey, but I got a reliable pickup now. Yeah, you, that is true. You got a reliable pickup now. Ross, before, what was your truck before? A 1994 Chevy Silverado. 1994 Chevy Silverado. Uh, how many times had it been to the shop in the past month? I don't want to talk about it. It also has 348,000 miles on it. Yeah, and, it's, and it was getting kind of old in the year range, too. But yeah, it's still, I'm still going to drive it. It's just a fact is it's going to be, man, that's probably going to be more of my work truck. Your work truck? This will be the nice truck. This will be the uh, going out truck on the weekends and for Ross. It's even got your uh, plug in so you can charge it. No, you, no. It heats up the block in the wintertime when it gets cold so it's easier to start. You sure that doesn't charge it? No. What? You've been living life all wrong. I'm kidding guys, yes, I know what this is. This is an engine block heater before someone destroys me in the comment section because of it. <laughs> but yes, I know what a, I know what an engine block is. I was just kind of playing with you guys for a minute. But still, you gonna plug it in? If it gets ever gets cold. That is true, it is January right now and the door's open on this shop and it's 53 degrees outside, but hey, that's beside the point. No, let me go down in the comments what you guys think of my new track. How's the interior? In? I'm actually gonna park it has four doors. Four doors? It's got the whole sheet mats, leather seats, power windows, electric seats on both sides, ball speakers, climate control huh. for driver and passenger. Proud of you, Ross. You've came a long way. Oh my. I can only imagine what he's gonna get himself into now. Also, we have some more exciting news for Ross. There's a very good possibility that he might be getting an injection system for his Hagee sprayer. So you guys will get to learn, take the learning curve as he does this spring. Yeah. If I'm going to bring you guys along with it if we get it. <laughs> if we get it. That's the main issue. So basically the thing that we're going through right now is these pumps that are on like mine here, uh, you have to have one that connects with the Hagee rate controller from John Deere, which is for one expensive to do. I mean, one of them pumps alone is about $5,000. So we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, it just depends on how everything goes as far as the purchasing of it and the monetary wise and everything else. We'll just have to see how far it goes. But that's the main part in having an injection system is the pump. The pump is what runs it all. That's what makes it worth having it. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at the one tomorrow. I think. So we'll see. Ross is already jumping with joy. He's got a new truck and he's going to get new electronics and tools and toys for his sprayer. So so, so far this year is great. Starting out 2020 right. Oh my Ross. <laughs> but we. <laughs> It'll go here, start here, it'll go up, and then it'll, 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 it'll gradually go down and go up and straight down. Straight down, straight downhill, huh? Mm -hmm. um, also, another thing about these pumps is uh, the seals go bad occasionally in these outlets and inlets and stuff right here. Yeah, a seal kit for that is not that expensive, but still, it's just a major pain to have to deal with because um, if you don't do it right, then It'll go bad, which I also got to do that again this year before we get started. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and change that at the beginning of the year instead of changing it halfway through the year like what we done last year. Probably change it on this one if we end up getting that new one. I'm sure that them seals are dry rod because it's been sitting there for three years. And I'll probably end up doing them also, which them seal kits are only like 20 or 30 bucks. So they aren't that bad. Save you time and save you money while it's in the shop and ready to go. <laughs> what? Why to point it at you? I didn't know. Because you'll be the one to break everything. Hey. Just don't break your truck. That's the plan. Okay, good boy. Also, we do have a guy coming tomorrow. He's going to come and talk to us 
about his job and tell us about what he does and kind of run over what he does. It's uh, farm related stuff. So it'll, it'll be pretty interesting for you guys to be able to see. That's for sure. I'm not sure if it'll come out before or after this one. We'll just have to wait and see what happens, but it'll be a pretty interesting video as far as I'm concerned. And it'll be very informative for you guys to be able to watch and enjoy and yeah, all that stuff. But so currently today I'm on my way down to Poseyville to go look at this injection system for a Heggie sprayer. Um, the only issue that we have is that these pumps that they got down there are not the correct technology to talk to our brake controller that we have on the Heggie through John Deere. It needs to be like an ISO and this one's an I, no, it needs to be an IDC and this one's an ISO pump so we're gonna go down here and look at it though and see what all they got in the kit because at the end of the day it might end up saving me more money than what it's worth to let these things go so we'll go down here and we'll have a look at it the worst part about it is I gotta send them off and get them redone that's $600 already gone so we'll just have to wait and see what they look like see what kind of parts they got with them who knows we might end up come back down to get them sometime so anyways guys there's a whole rundown of what's going on in the shop everything's going on yeah everything's crazy going on around here anyways uh remember to follow the farm instagram facebook page hit that like button hit the subscribe button and come back for another video and i guess we'll see you guys in the next one thank you for watching